Hello, is this Martin? This is. Hey, Martin, this is Felix I, uh, from, well, obviously you know where, but how's it going, buddy? <laughs> doing good, doing good. Oh, Ugh, what keep you know, me. Man, I, I know it's got to be pretty late where you're at. Uh, not too bad. I think it's 9, 10, something like that. Oh, okay. Uh, then I guess time zones. I guess you're about an hour, maybe two hours ahead of me. Okay, look, I just check it's 9 o'clock. <laughs> okay, about an hour then. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's okay. I've been sick. I'm under the weather, so oh, if I sound like hell, my bad. No, no, no. Trust me. I was just mentioning that. I'm trying to fight it off myself, and it's it's something that's going around. You know, my, I was talking. I was mentioning that my trainer had mentioned that, you know, you, if you're on the verge of getting it but not quite, maybe it's good to go sweat it off in the sauna. I've heard that Ooh. can help. You can help you sweat out the the bad toxins in your body or something. But we'll leave that for another time. I know you. Uh, I didn't know if you knew that or not, but that's something to think about. I've heard it, so huh, I'll try it out. <laughs> now, I was wanting to ask you, since we last talked, it's been roughly about a year and a half or so since we talked, I would say, maybe a little over a year. What you been up to lately? What you been up to? Uh, wrestling? Uh, yeah, I'm wrestling just about every other week, actually. Um, we I came back. I'm just trying to get myself back into – what I call running shape. Um, my ankle healed all up, and then I ended up having to have nose surgery. I guess my nose was broke a few times. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that kind of came out of nowhere. I just noticed I was having some troubles breathing. So um, uh, then I just tried to put on some weight, and mm-hmm. I did that. Now I'm sitting at a good 226. I'm wrestling every other week. And uh, I, what I was doing mostly is concentrating on getting my Utah product up and running good to the standard that I'm okay with. So, okay, okay. Uh, do you still figure I had to experience to all this? Well and TNA so far? Uh, Most definitely. The dream is still there. It's just uh, uh, obviously everything's fickle in this entertainment industry, so it's definitely still there. My, uh, I'm never going to say never to that. So, well, you know, um, that's why it's very really interesting. But that's okay. That's very interesting as well with all this gut check and all that that's out there right now. I was just going to mention that. I mean, opposed to you doing tough enough, if 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 by chance it ever did happen, not saying it wouldn't, because like I said, you never can say never in the wrestling business. If Dixie Carter and them reached out to you about being a part of it, well, I'm not sure it would be her in particularly, but somebody from TNA reached out to you about being a part of it. Would you welcome it? And if so, I mean, if you you felt that you, I mean, obviously you you had what it took to be part of the WWE Tough Enough. I think you definitely could win yourself a contract on Impact Wrestling. Would you Would you agree? Yeah, I, I definitely think it's uh, I, it's actually been talked about. Um, to be honest, uh, just never really pursued um, much really in either direction, but it's been talked about, uh, and. That's about where it stands right now. It's just been talked about uh, between me and them. I'll see you but, actually uh, been in contact. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I'd like to keep the doors open, you know? <laughs> hey, better to, to keep, gonna keep uh, good contacts and not burn any bridges, as I've heard some people have done in a wrestling business. Yeah, it's pretty easy to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I've also had, I don't know if you're, have you, are you pretty familiar with ja- uh, the wrestler Jagger Lane? Yes, I've that's you know I know him he is yeah. Yeah, I had him on a couple of weeks ago. He was really thrilled and told a good story and really got some good good results out of that one. He's a good he's a good guy. He's got a good heart and I think he definitely could do a lot. He could do a lot and he's probably going to do a lot in the wrestling business if whatever he hasn't already done, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard he's getting around a lot. He's a good guy. He's always been nice to me uh, when I send. We've never actually been able to be really in the same uh promotion in one way or the other um or group so uh but definitely he's a good good guy and you know how wrestling works at all you, you said you haven't actually worked in the same company though right uh we've never actually been able to work in the same company um i've gone to some of his shows he's gone to some of mine uh but we've never actually been able to be on really be on the same show together okay. so yes i've never actually gotten to work him but we we like to Every once in a while, we'll we'll shoot the crap every once in a while with each other and just see keep up with each other. Nice, nice. Now I seen something. Uh, I can't remember if it was this summer, last summer, or maybe mid fall or so. 
that you had mentioned that you were you actually paid a visit to Impact Wrestling as far as well you were a fan in the crowd. I saw you actually for that particular episode. I did see you in the crowd. How was that? How how fun was that compared to being at a WWE live event? Very or different. It's raw, I should say. Very, very different. Um, and as always, I always hate being on the other side of the ropes. So I love mingling with the fans, and there was actually higher Martin chance while we were there, so that made me oh, feel really good about being there. Yeah. Um, and it was the segment there with uh, Joey Ryan doing his gut check. So that made me feel really good, especially since I know Joey Ryan, so I knew he was pretty – he had what it takes to be there, so I wasn't. I knew it wasn't distracting too much. But the, it was good to hear the fans actually react to me being there. Um, my Twitter, my Facebook, when the cell phone was being blown up. It was great uh, to be there. It was good. It's a different, definitely a different experience than Raw. You know, I've always wondered that. I've never been to an actual Impact Wrestling show, and I've heard a lot of good things about it. I mean, it's a lot more – it's a different atmosphere than it is for, obviously, WWE events. And not saying that there is a good or bad, but it's very different. Very, it's like a total different air. You know, you're just in a different atmosphere, so to speak. Exactly, just a different place. Um, obviously, the scale is a lot further. Is, is the scale is not as big, um, uh, but the fans are just as crazy, just as uh, thrilled to be there. Um, so that's pretty good. And, and I, I like wrestling either way. So they have definitely talented roster on there. Very cool. Very cool. Did you actually get to interact with any of the stars backstage at all, or? get to shake hands um, with I, any of the legends. I got I got I was talking with some of the one of the writers but I didn't, they wouldn't didn't have uh, the ability to get me backstage. Um Eric Young is the one who hooked me up with VIP tickets, so that was really nice of him. He's a really cool dude. I, I swear he seems like such a dork but he really is such a nice guy. He really is. I've seen him and he and just the way he interacts on people with people on Twitter and he just seems like he'd be a really nice guy to to hang out with. And, oh, and and I have hung out with him out in Colorado. We did a show with him, um, and he, in, in all ways of the sense, he is a total dork as well. Total <laughs> cool guy, but a complete dork. Uh, I think we played. Are you, you to be one dork to another? Because I remember you, you would always talk about how much of a dork you would be too. I'm wearing a Superman shirt and Ninja Turtles uh, <laughs> slippers right now, so I. Uh, consider myself a big dork uh yeah me and eric young we were in colorado we played uh nintendo we after a show for like until five o'clock in the morning one day nintendo not the old yeah we just all right regular nintendo like battle droid we tried the regular like regular mario um did some super nintendo games oh yeah it was it was awesome it was it was us a bottle of jack and nintendo it was awesome (laughs) Very cool, very cool. Now, I wanted to ask you, too, because I know that you still keep in contact, uh, at least I've noticed anyways, that you keep in contact with uh, with Luke from Tough Enough, because I think you guys even had a match sometime last year, too. How'd that go? We did, yeah. We we did have a great match. We sold out the arena. Um, the arena on Hill 1500, but still for an indie show, that's, oh, that's, good. Uh, that's, that's, good. that's a pretty good turnout. Yeah, uh, we had a great match. Unfortunately, I, I think the footage, the, all the cameras uh, doped out on us before we, I got much good footage, so I haven't been able to get the footage out there. But um, it was a great match. Uh, me and him just have a natural tendency to like to kick each other in the face, so <laughs> it worked out well. Um, there is actually, possibly, and we'll see how this works out, um, but he's been working really good on his personal training stuff. I yeah, see that on his post. Yes, yes, I um, that. Yeah, it looks like he's doing pretty well, but um, it has been talked about uh, since last time we ended up in a draw, uh, okay. double pin on each okay. other. It was very, it was very dis- disheartening for both of us, um, but a heck of a match, I believe. And uh, but I, I have heard of rumors that it may happen again in April on the okay. East Coast. Hey, you know that'd be definitely something to tune into, and I'm sure once you guys get you know get if it's get con, uh, confirmation on it, I'm sure it, I would definitely be happy to help promote it and so forth and let people know about it as well. Because I would yeah, definitely, definitely I, would, I'm gonna... I would love to see it. I mean, honestly, but I mean the best way I could see it was probably be on YouTube. Yeah, that seems like probably the best way it's gonna come out too. Um, but yeah, it, there was there was 1,500 people the first match we had. 
And uh, the show, unfortunately, was going really long. It was like two and a half, three hours long. But they all stayed for that match, and they were up and crazy for that match. It was, it was a great experience, that match. And uh, and it would, it's, it's easy to hit somebody in the face when it's Luke Robinson and, and me. So... Yeah, uh, yeah, I'd love if you guys, when, if it actually does happen, we'll get some dates out there. We're thinking April. Obviously, the more fans that go out there and tweet Luke and me uh, yeah. and promoters, let us know, and uh, we'll try and make this happen because we definitely, there's some conflicts that haven't been resolved yet. <laughs> You know, and you two should have been the ones at the end. At the at the end, but that would lead me to my next question. As obviously most have already heard by now, it's pretty much old news now. But I definitely wanted to run it by you and see what you thought about uh, Andy being released last year. Um, how, well, how I felt about it, I wasn't too surprised to be honest. Um, I, obviously, tough enough. Unfortunately, hasn't had a great track record. Uh, I was. They really haven't. The only the only guy what we got the Miz and Ryder is right now is getting a big push, and he was on Tough Enough like three, like two seasons ago. Yeah, um, Miz was in season. I think it was well, you guys were season five, right? I think we were five or seven. I I honestly, I've never watched an episode before. <laughs> Because I know John Morrison was on there for a while, and he he was the only really only one that really got over. But the sad part about it was, as much talent as it was on your season, the only one to really make it is a dancer on the on the show now, and I I, I I'm baffled by that. But that's I'm looking at it as a, a fan's pers- perspective, not because I know anything, because I really don't. But I'm just amazed that talent that that was there, like yourself and Luke and and AJ and. Those you guys who could pre- be just totally shining like crazy in NXT right now, and the only one who made it was ended up saying her favorite match was Melina against Alicia Fox. Okay, I'm not going to say the word, but I'll just say the initials WTF. Excuse me, really? WTF, yeah. <laughs> I'll keep it PG-13, but that was definitely what WTF. <laughs> um, <laughs> obviously with with Andy, I'm just hoping. No, nah, she was a really nice girl when I when we were there. Um, obviously, I wasn't thinking she was going to be the winner of Tough Enough, especially after the week two when she was gone. But uh, but yeah, it was, I, I was definitely sad for Andy because I I was uh, rooting for the guy because once the competition is over, I hope the best for everyone who yeah. on their own stuff. Um, just as a as a personal thing, that's how he's supporting his family. He's got kids on the way. They push that story like crazy on TV. Um, Eva Lee's actually ended up getting hired as well. I did uh, say that so, too, and I seen that she was she actually did get to compete a little bit on NXT for a little bit, and then surprisingly she was released, and that did come kind of a shock to most. But she's not sweating it. She looks she seems to be happy happier and pursuing her other goals. I believe I've heard her say something or mention something to the extent of MMA, but I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me on that because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the MMA stuff too, the MMA pictures or that she's going MMA. Um, that's good. She's keeping her options or venues open, making the best out of the situation. Um, but I saw her got hired as well as uh, uh, I, now I can't remember the other girl now that got hired as well. Oh, Christina. Uh, Christina Crawford, Christina. Christina Crawford did get hired, yeah. She got let go, too. So basically the only one left is Ariana. Wow. Um, but, yeah, I know a couple of uh, a couple of tough enough guys, like AJ's done some stuff with them. I went, I did a SummerSlam for them. So we've been in front of their faces. Um, but we can only do what we can do. So, uh, But definitely it's, it was a big surprise to me. There was a lot of talent, a lot of people that had ex- that I saw great potential on our show. Mm-hmm. Um, I and I know there was going through a lot of whole changes in the, the WWE talent, but uh, I, I'm surprised that there hasn't been any further action on, on, on Tough Enough at all. And that they, they didn't even pursue a possible second season that I heard Bill was talking about on his Twitter, that there was a possibility... But it got shot down, and it just didn't have the same steam like like like, like they had hoped. And I mean, don't get me wrong, the show did great. I watched every episode and was rooting for my obviously the people I wanted to see win. And sadly, that didn't happen. But I'm not going to get into that. Um, 
I do have a question for you, though. Do you actually mind taking uh, maybe a question from any callers at all? I would love to take any questions from any callers, yeah. By the way, I'd like to just plug on here just because I haven't been able to get very much communication out. I go through phones like underwear. I break them like crazy. So anybody who's written me on Twitter or Facebook, if I haven't been able to get back with you, I apologize. I've I've gone through three phones in these last two months. So I apologize once I get one that sticks with me. Uh, I will get back with you, I promise. (laughs) Not a problem. Not a problem. I'll definitely be posting a link on your Facebook page and your Twitter page as well. But um, we're going to take a quick break, and I'm going to go ahead and come back. I do have a caller who's been waiting patiently to talk to you. Has a couple of questions to ask you, and I think that would be fun. Sounds Fan- fantastic. All right, be back in just a few minutes. Okay. And we're back. Thank you so much for staying with us here. We have Martin from Tough Enough back here with us, and we're going to bring him back on the line and take a few questions from any callers. And we do have one caller who's been waiting. Austin, I haven't forgotten about you. Hang in there. You there, Martin? I am, yes. All right. I'm going to go ahead and bring on the caller here. His name is Austin, and he's calling out of Louisiana. Let's bring him on now. Austin, you there? Hey, 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 hey. Austin, here's Martin. Hey, Martin, hey, here's hey. Austin. <laughs> hey, Austin. Hey, Martin. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm sitting here with a 12-ounce steak. I'm pretty, feeling pretty good right now. Uh, how <laughs> you doing? Nice. <laughs> I'm doing great. I was actually going to I was actually gonna steal one of Joseph's questions, but he took it back and uh, – I really have, I have another one. I have um, you're talking about WWE and and TNA. Like, do you have any aspirations to go to like ROH or something? You know, ROH. Uh, the door is definitely open. ROH, uh, from what I've seen, has been a great company. Um, but obviously, I, I hate to say it one way or the other, but the WWE is the pinnacle of where you want to be. Uh, everywhere else seems to be. Well, the dreams of WWE. I definitely want to keep the doors open uh, for ROH or TNA, uh, get the experience, and possibly make that as a stepping stone or even just stay there as well. Uh, definitely ROH is uh, definitely still 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 a picture of things. Um, I haven't really pursued that at all or looked at it too much. I'm still looking at the big two, if you want to call them that way. Um, uh, but definitely ROH looks like they were reached, If they reached out to offer you something, though, would you take them up on it and possibly showing up at one of their shows? Definitely, definitely keep the, keeping the doors open. It works to close doors to be a great experience. You learn from somebody every time you're in the wrestling ring. So I think ROH, uh, I've seen some of the talent on there, uh, and I think that'd be a great spot to for even for me to to learn even more than what I've already learned. So I think ROH is a, a great company up there. I just don't think it has the backing behind it like the other two companies do. Yeah, I mean that you know like the like uh, I was gonna say, what I was gonna say. Oh well, I'm just gonna steal another one of Felix's questions since I forgot. But you, do you keep in touch with Stone Cold or Trish Stratus? You know, Booker T, whatever. Um, anytime. Uh, mostly, actually, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Bill DeMott. Um, I'll check back in with them once every couple months. Just tell them something. Just keep them up how I'm dated. Uh, I, I I believe I told Stone Cold when my when my leg was good. Hey, I'm here. I actually just uh, sent him a text message. I have a cell phone number. Same with Bills. Uh, they were nice enough to give me that that information. Through everybody else, I have to go through with, with through Twitter, uh, and sometimes it's hard to get to them with Twitter. But yeah, definitely try and keep in touch with Bill and Steve. Uh, just to keep them up on my status, how I'm doing as far as my framework. I've gotten up to 226 pounds. I'm in the ring. I'm wrestling. I'm feeling good. Um, and definitely when the time comes where our I'm going to pursue something even harder than uh, I'll definitely get either, both of them actually a call. Stone Cold and uh, Bill have been really, really good with me. Actually, Stone Cold has been the best with me. <laughs> so that's always a good feeling to have. Hey, if I need a reference, I can call up Stone Cold Steve Austin and say, hey. Hey, yeah, it's one of the best. So you got a good yeah. uh, contact. And, yeah, uh, I got a pretty good contact there. Some, <laughs> a couple of people might know who he is. Yeah. Like weren't you weren't you on like an episode of Superstars or something? It was uh, or was that AJ? I, I I can't remember. I've seen one of the two. That was AJ. AJ was actually on uh, Superstars, and he was with uh, Brodus Clay. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, the, I remember, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, that was before the new gimmick that he's got now with uh, Ariana. 
Um, um, so this was just the uh, yeah to come out there he had the same match he did the same match when he was the destro- like the destroyer guy versus what he is now uh, the Funkasaurus but yeah it was just a quick squash match Edge did pretty good but looks like he has the same match every single time he steps in the ring I don't have a problem with him but it's the same thing every single time uh, just something like with Ryback even though I do like Ryback but you know his matches are just. You know, like the same all the time. Nothing different. Yeah, definitely. And I've seen Brodus work when I was down in Florida. Uh, I've been down in Florida a few times. I've seen seen him work, and he's a great worker. Uh, it's just what they give you on the, at the WWE. Uh, you make the most of what you got. And uh, he's still yeah, getting booked. He's still I working with it. Though? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Martin. No, go ahead. Well, one thing I was going to say, because I was going to kind of mention that, the only bad thing about WWE, and this is, there are only very few things I could say bad about it, and it's the fact that they give, they come up with some of the most corniest gimmicks that either, either it's, it's, it's either they, it'll make you or break you, and you'll never get back from it again. And, and I'll give you an example is uh, Eugene. That gimmick, unfortunately, stayed with him, and I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a heck of a wrestler, but unfortunately, that gimmick stuck with him, and he never was able to get get away from it. I mean, uh, it's, same with Festus it really as well. How you work with it, I think. Exactly. It's same with, when they give you a gimmick like that, it's really hard to come back from. Like Eugene Festus was also a very good wrestler, but he, he instead he'll just look all funny, and then when the bell rings, he'll come in and start beating the crap out of people. That's another good one. Uh, exactly. Exactly, and those gimmicks are kind of hard to come back from. Um, when it's a character gimmick like Brodus Clay's got right now. Um, you kind of got a little bit more leeway to put in your own input, kind of mold it into something that works better than the original idea. Now, would you have so gone out there and danced with Arion and and and, and uh, I can't remember Naomi? Would you guys would you have gone, gone out there and danced like a well like well, like Brodus if they gave you that gimmick? Well, yeah, I think my hips move a little bit more than his does. <laughs> um, maybe not my butt, but my hips. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's the WWE is a hard place to get into. Take what they give you. Um, even Stone Cold said the same thing um, when he had his blonde hair and he was. I don't even remember what the name was. Not Stunning Steve. It was before Stunning Steve. The Ringmaster. Ring. Well, that yeah. The Ringmaster in WWE. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that was what was given to him. You make the most of what you got. Um, but writers, they they do their own writing. But it's great when you have. Um, the wherewithal to come up with something for yourself. All right, this is what I got. How can I change this into something I actually give a crap damn about? Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, you can keep the dancing. You keep all that. And I'm just trying to mold it into something that's more you. So throw a little bit of something else in there. So maybe with that contrast of the dancer and his input, maybe it can be, be something. Um, so I'm, I'm sure it was it – was, basically the writers are looking for something. Obviously, we all know writers – are fickle. Sometimes they have great stories. Sometimes they have horrible stories. But with input from the wrestlers who are actually I mean, doing that gimmick, that's the best way to form a gimmick and make something out of yourself. But you take know, with some, the opportunity they give you. You know, some of the guys, though, either they rely too much on the writers or some or, or they don't, and some don't really need them. I mean, say some of the old school guys, like Steve Austin, like The Undertaker, like even Sean or – even Hunter, you know, Triple H who shoot from the hip, and they, 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 they get their point across, and they don't really need the writers. And that's what I think. The writers, I don't know if they it, – it, it, it's kind of iffy with the writers these days. Yeah, and I read even with Shawn Michaels. Um, when he was with the Rockers and he broke up and they made him the heartbreak kid, um, he was, I guess, from one of the one I read his book, um, he was really shy about that. I wasn't quite sure how this would work. Um, but he went with it, and then it formed into something good. He threw in his own input and made made things happen. And now HBK is the heartbreak kid, the showstopper, etc. Um, you know, and but at first, Gary Martel had, had a lot to do with that too, though, if you remember. Exactly. Um, but it's another example of he got a gimmick that he wasn't quite sure about. No, he ran right. with it you're and right. changed it. You're right. Um, so I really, it's really hard though, because there's a fine line. Like I was saying earlier, mm. it's easy to burn a bridge or make somebody ticked off in wrestling in the wrong position. Um, so it, it's tough. You want, to, you want to get with those writers and say, hey, what about this or this? But you also don't want to burn any bridges and you kind of stick your neck out there by doing so. 
Now, I actually so. wanted to mention something off the off the fly here, and this is something I was just talking about with Austin a little while ago. Um, have you heard anything about the Extreme Rising? And if so, if they ever reached out to you, because I know they're trying to build something very similar, if not somewhat similar to what ECW was in, in the 90s, and trying to bring it into TV, and if they reached out to you to possibly work with them in a more free, obviously more freer atmosphere, and you know, to, to build your character, would you consider taking them up on the offer to work with some of the guys like Shane Douglas, like uh, uh, Sabu, like maybe some of the old school uh, ECW guys, and even some of the new guys to work with and help build that company from the maybe from the ground up? What would you say about that? Well, to be honest, I've never heard of. Uh, the, the the rising company you're talking about, but I'd be very interested to see, especially with some of the older guys who have that experience. That'd be, I think, a great way. I, I definitely would, would keep my options open to that. So yeah, they, if you guys are out that. there, in contact me. I'm fine with that. Um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so is it is it is it all hardcore or is it a little bit of everything or? It's really, I mean, would you say Austin? It's a little bit more hardcore, a little mix of everything, kind of what ECW really was. Would you agree, Austin? Yeah, but it's like uh, it's 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 hardcore at times. But then there's like a few weeks ago, how in the main event with Steve Anthony, not, not Steve Anthony, um, Steve Richards versus Luke Cox for the Extreme Rising Championship. They were gonna name the first ever Extreme Rising Champion. And it was Stevie and Stevie Richards, you know, eventually won. But it was more of a wrestling match. They didn't really have much of a you know a hardcore theme to it. So remember ECW. Um, they had uh, Eddie Cabrero and uh, yep. that whole. They had the cruiserweights and they had the technical wrestlers. Um, then they had the hardcore stuff. That's really what they're really known for. Um, yep, yep. I I can do the hardcore stuff. I would like to stick with the wrestling. Um, sure, they would wrestling the story. Uh, but yeah, I would love. Uh, my ears are definitely open to that, and I'm gonna look that up as soon as I get off the phone. And what's what's the company called? One more time. It's Extreme Rising. And Extreme Rising. Like, okay. I, I believe I have a link because here's what they're trying to do, and I'm not sure if you've heard about this, but you might as well spread the word because, I mean, any little help that you may be able to get word out to would definitely help them. They're trying to get a TV show going, and they're, they have, they've they opened up an Indiegogo account, and they're trying to get to a certain limit by a certain time to help get the TV show going. And I actually plan on having uh, the one of the co-owners of the company on my show next week. Hmm. <laughs> to discuss details on what they're doing and how they're going about it. And by all means, if you're interested in calling in and talking, I can definitely let you know when it's going to happen. And you guys can make something of that and find out more information. Or if you'd like to just listen in, you can do that too. Uh, do they have some way I can see their tape or where are they seeing them? Or, or uh, the do you know the name of the website, Austin? What do you say? The website? The website is streamrising. I know, streamrising.com, I think. I think it's R I S I N G, just exactly how it's spelled, right? Yeah, rising. Yeah. Um, I wonder well, if I have to take a look at that. Yeah, I was, I was going to say they have 15 days. And I'm sorry. Go ahead. Keep going. I was, there's 15 days they have until they have to make sixteen thousand dollars. If they don't make sixteen thousand dollars by the 15 day, you know, deadline, they will not get a TV show. Do you know where they're at right now? They're I Philadelphia believe. PA, and oh, okay, oh, yeah. oh, you mean money thing? Okay, yeah, like one thousand six hundred, I think. <laughs> well, yeah, about fifteen thousand more or so. <laughs> Roughly. Yeah, but I don't think they're gonna make it. To be honest, I, I hope they do, but they're not getting a lot of money in. Well, it's I, what yeah. I think it is, and this is what I was listening to Shane Douglas' the interviews he was doing to promote the show is that he people have seen the the attempts WWE made as well as TNA to bring back the extreme to their to their TV shows and it obviously flopped and they're not really sure if it'll work. And people are really iffy about getting a, being a part of something that may or may, may not work. And I know with the Indiegogo thing, if you donate obviously to them, they wouldn't charge you unless it actually went through, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and that's, I mean, I could see that being iffy, but I mean, honestly, he said it best that wrestling is in a slump at this point in time where the ratings have been kind of crap. And, kind of like it was in the early 90s until it, they started to recreate the ECW thing with Paul Heyman and, and what he went what he did with ECW, but they're doing it with different people now, obviously, that Paul Heyman's contracted to WWE 
and trying to recreate that magic that once was in the 90s, but going about it a different way. Not just the old school guys, but obviously new guys, and want to maybe build build from that and give a little bit extreme back into wrestling, if that makes sense. That does make sense, and I think that's a great thing. Uh, I think we need, just like in the old 90s, we had, we knew we had variety. We had ECW, WCW, WWF back then. Uh, yeah. We had all this, all different places to go, and now you have a one-stop shop, uh, which is great for that company. But then again, the, the options are limited for fans, and ROH is out there, TNA is out there, Extreme Rising is out there, and just not a lot of fans here know how to get in contact or to watch it. Um, uh, it, that that is one thing that I think is really lacking is diversity in the wrestling industry. Very much so. Very much. It's been lacking, lacking for the last decade or so since WWE basically bought their competition. <laughs> yeah, good smart smart business wise. Uh, well, him. it was. I mean, I mean, obviously TNA does not. Have, I mean, they have Dixie Carter and the Carter family, but they don't have the media mogul that obviously Ted Turner was. For, for obviously TBS and World Championship Wrestling that they obviously offered so much money to the guys back in the day to get them going and almost put WWE out of business, which I'm guessing if we've obviously seen the Monday Night Wars, they came close a few times. But uh, to, when there's competition, that makes for better television. I mean, heck, we were all watching back then when WWE was sitting on top of the world, really, and with the 8.1 ratings compared to like Monday Night Football, which was doing crap back then, and killing wrestling now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I think what it, it's going to take is just to be, uh, be able to fans need to find the kind of wrestling they're looking for, and those companies that are there, they're just unknown, need to find a way to get out there. Using that social media is definitely an outlet that a lot of people are running to, and it's working. Yeah. I think it's going to have to take a cult following from our wrestling fans, including you, Austin, including anyone out there listening. It's going to have to take a cult following behind a promotion to get some steam behind it in order to create that diversity for any promotion to get up there and do something with it. When there's when steam behind it and there's fans behind it, Backing and uh, TV and all that will follow. But there needs to be some steam behind it. There needs to be a fan, almost like a cult following. And I know wrestlers are like a cult. Uh, exactly. Wrestling fans and wrestling wrestling fans are just like a cult. Um, they, some live and breathe it. So uh, we need those fans uh, just to look out, look at the diversity out there. Um, there are companies out there that have great talent and, and put on an awesome show. By the way, I was going to ask you, how is that steak? Was that pretty good? Um, I'm waiting before I eat it uh, <laughs> until the interview is over. So I'm sitting here just sniffing at water, uh, getting my mouth all watered up for it. Um, <laughs> but I didn't want to eat, sit here and answer questions with my mouth full like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. But it's about wrestling. When I talk about wrestling, it's something I'm passionate about. So I like to I, – I, I feel like I'm a horrible talker right now because I have a million things in my mind uh, no, to say. Um. But yeah, I want to put out a million points out there. They're just I like shooting the crap with uh, with fans that know wrestling and people that know wrestling. Um, and so it's a good experience. I enjoy enjoying this interview. Oh, well, thank you very much. We're going to take our last break. And if Austin has any more questions, I think he's going to let you know about them. Um, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, guys? Thank you. All right. And we're back with Pipe Bomb Radio, interviewing here with, uh, actually just chatting, really not an interview, it's more laid back than anything else, uh, with Martin Casaus and from, well, from Tough Enough, I believe it was season five, and if I'm wrong, hey, I'm only human, and got my buddy Austin on here with me, and I'm going to bring him back on, and we're going to have some more fun. You guys back on? Yeah, I'm back on here. I'm here, feeling good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All righty, Austin, did you have any more questions for Martin? Yeah, I was going to – I'm trying to – like, I had a bunch of things I wanted to ask him, and right when I got on the phone, I feel like every single thing I wanted to ask him shot out my head. I thought <laughs> uh, bring something up here. Uh, who do you Don't think you love when that can, happens? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, who do you think uh, is – any any like any wrestler, WCNA or whatever, that doesn't get his you know the credit that he, he deserves? For, you know, if he's like, a, you know, like Trent Beretta, who was just released like two weeks ago, great wrestler, and he got released. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I think it'd be someone like Tyson Kidd. I was going to say that. You just became Tyson Kidd can work. 
<laughs> Tyson Kidd can work better than most of the people there on the roster. It's just he doesn't have the size on him. Um, or the writers just don't have something for you, as Colt Cabana says. Um, exactly. Uh, but, yeah, but one way, for one reason or another, he's just not utilized like I know he can be and do. So, unfortunately, I do have to say Tyson Kidd on this one. I really hope they, they turn around and do something with him. They're going to have to wait until the – the end of 2013 because he was uh, he had an ACL injury like uh, over the December and he's going to be out for the the most part of this year. Which is sad because in order to be there, was that grad was there for what like nine years before he got any push ups ever? <laughs> now I think like that. Tyson, exactly. I think Tyson Kidd can run circles around Zach Ryder. Um and unfortunately, an injury like that happens because he's going out there and trying to prove something that he's worth the airtime. So it's unfortunate when that stuff happens like that. But that's where things turn around. It's when you got to figure out, is this what I really want to do? And for him, I think it is. So uh, hopefully he's back soon. Now, I do actually want to ask you, in wrestling, every superstar has had their moments where they stood out and shined. Steve Austin obviously had the King of the Ring in 96 when he obviously created the Austins 316. Most people will say CM Punk's night when he basically shot, you know, straight for the stars was June 27, 2000 or 26, 2011 when he made his infamous pipe bomb. Do you foresee or do you remember do you think there would be do you think that, that that moment for CM Punk made him basically took him to the next level? Do you think there's more to come from him? How do you feel about where CM Punk's going with his character? I think he's opening up a lot of doors for us, for people like me. Um, he He's taking WWE to another level rather than just a storyline. He's putting a little bit of realism to it. Um, just like his pipe bomb he did while he was in Vegas, uh, people, people know wrestling. It's, wrestling's pretty much an open book now. Um, so I'm, so why try and ignore it and, uh, say something about it and say it's not. So he, uh, so I think he's doing a lot of good things here for us. Uh, I see a lot of big things coming from him. I, unfortunately, I think, uh, it, it's going to be great with him versus the rock. I'm actually watching the rock versus Cena right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it's going to be great. That's going to be a great thing for him as a new stepping stone for him. So definitely he's got Places higher up to go. Now, to go. just out of curiosity, who, who's going to win, Rock or, uh, Rock or Punk? Who would you like to see win? Ooh. Here, here's a, you know, hmm. That's a rough one. That's a tough one. <laughs> I you, would say, honestly, it doesn't really matter because we as fans that are going to be watching, we're going to be entertained either way, I think. And it'd be just be uh, the one who's going to win in this match would be the fans. I completely agree with that. And I, I, I thought the Cena Rock match wasn't – all it could have been, um, but I think it's going to be a great match either way. Uh, I just hope if The Rock does win, takes the championship, that he sticks around with it. That's the plan, from what I've heard. Exactly I mean, I've my heard point. What's that? That exactly my point. That's one of the biggest points I'd like to make. That he sticks because around. I think that Cena is the men of their number one draw. He doesn't need a title. But they give it to him anyway, which is fine. Uh, CM Punk has put some definite legitimacy to it by having the title for 300, 400, I don't know how many days he's had it now. Mm-hmm. There's some legitimacy, like almost like in the old days, where title was something. It actually, um, meant, something. Now the, exactly. it actually meant something. Now, the problem is, is who in your guys' eyes uh, you think is, can step up and take the lead and hold the flag for the company? There's it's, really it's nobody kinda... that has stepped up just yet. I mean, honestly, the way he's going right now, I could see him holding on to it for a little while, but I honestly think that after 2012 and the fun that they did, they kind of took Cena on with his losing streak and all the crap they put him with. I honestly think they're going to put it back on him later this year, if not at WrestleMania, then probably afterwards. But I know that they're looking for their next breakout star, and I'm thinking that they're hoping maybe Ryback would be that person. I'm thinking they're definitely hoping. Now he's got a lot of work to do, and so we'll see whether he steps up or not. But definitely they're, they're searching. They're searching their straws, and they're seeing who they got left on the roster. And I think this is a time for those people who are on the roster 
to step up and show what you got uh, because they're searching for the next big person. Uh, well, so I, that's what I've noticed too. In the in the differences of the rosters back in the, the Attitude Era, we'll just use that as, as an example. To now is that everybody back then wanted to be on top, would cut your throat to be on top, and didn't. And when, if you screwed up, that's your that's your loss. I'm going to be on TV and I'm going to take your spot. Whereas nowadays, they just want to be on TV. There's no killer instinct. There's no one to get to the top to be the number one guy. Everybody's okay with just what the, with what they've got, and that's, I mean maybe I'm wrong for saying that, but personally I would like to see a little bit more strive to be number one from these guys. And there's some of them that are standing out more now than they used to, but I mean that's just how I see it. I, I actually agree with you. Back in the Attitude Era, there were people that were fighting to get two minutes of TV, um, and now where it's a three-hour show, I don't know if that makes it worse or not because I'm not seeing a lot of the guys that that are getting featured that weren't being featured before. Exactly. Um, it's a three hour show. So this is a time for some guys to step up and do something with it. Um, fight for that five minutes of TV time. And once you fight to there, fight for another half hour, rock gets a 20 minute promo, uh, which is fantastic. He can cut a great promo 10 minutes when he can in 20 minutes. Either mm-hmm. way, we're entertained, <laughs> but this is a chance for a new guy to get in there, do something about it and get five minutes, put on a good five, 10 minute match I, I honestly, I five minute matches are tough for anybody, yeah. um, but you got a three hour show there, so show them that you could do something with seven minutes, and maybe they'll give you six, and then show them something you can do something with eight minutes. Uh, you're there on the road all the time with them, so do something with it. Fight for that. There needs well, with, to be that. with um with Triple H and and Stephanie slowly but surely taking the reins over from Vince. <coughs> Excuse me, I've noticed that. Uh, Hunter, well, some of the WWE guys have been kind of peeking into the independent circuits and, and, and maybe possibly being interested in recruiting some of the guys from Ring of Honor uh, and so forth and bring them in. Most recently, I've heard rumors about El Generico. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but the fact that they're even considering looking at the independent guys, it's, it's, it's a, a sign of obviously positive things to come as, as, as Hunter and, and Stephanie take over. What are your thoughts on how, how – who do you – I mean, do you think they'll do okay as they decide to take over the company, well, eventually, after Vince steps down? Um, you definitely got the experience on it. And having a wrestler there who's gone from nothing from the French gimmick to where he is, I think that's a good thing. Now, I don't want to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I've done some st- history. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it, I think that'll be a good thing. Steph's been there for a while, so I really just think if he's going to do it, do it. And I, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing a big push behind it or a big huge change um, yet. I know uh, Sinkara, I thought was if, if I believe right, that was Triple H's idea as well, Actually, and that turned out excellent. Like as well too, but yeah, Sinkara was Triple H's project too. Right, so that's good. They're getting out of the the big man realm. Um, and I think CM has CM Punk has p- p- like paved the way for that. Daniel Bryan, guy like that, who you're not seeing. I go to Florida and I'm not the smallest guy there, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, um, I'm I'm hoping for the best. I just haven't seen anything that fully gets me going crazy and excited about it. But the opportunity is there. That's the only thing I'm excited about. I haven't seen anything really that goes behind there and taking over, but definitely an opportunity there. And uh, not only it's, it's time for the guys that are hired there already, I think it's time for guys like me to get our shot to get there. That's what I'm saying, you know, why not? But I did want to ask you now, if people want to get in contact with you, follow you, or what's the best way to get in contact with you through your social media, of course, but through social media, of course. Uh, well, here's my cell phone. It's eight oh. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, honestly, I, I love getting back. I love talking with you. I love inter- interactions like this with all you fans. Again, my phone's kind of busted um, every couple of days, so I'll get it fixed. I'm getting the problem resolved soon. Um, but my Twitter is at Martin Casaus. M A R T I N C A S A U S. I have an Instagram. We'll start posting pictures once I can get a phone that works there. Um, <laughs> And then my Facebook. It's weird. It's my old wrestling gimmick, but it's facebook.com slash Tristan Gallo, T-R-I-S-T-A-N-G-A-L-L-O. I'm going to fix that, too, once I get to a computer. 
I can change that. So my comp- my phone is killing me right now. If you can't tell. Yeah, I know. Nowadays we're 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 gone without our phones. We're nothing without our phones, and we need it. That's just our way. I of feel so naked, and content. I walk around half naked all the time anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, I encourage anybody out there send me a message, add me on Facebook, uh, tweet at me. I will eventually get back to you. If not, tweet me again. I'll get back to you. Um, <laughs> give me give me tell me about places like um, Extreme Rising. I just I'm on their website right now looking at them. Um, and the stuff like this, tell me, get me out somewhere there, and then hopefully I get to meet you guys all soon. Hey, there you go. I mean, hey, I'll even put, I'll mention it, and like I said, if once the time comes around, uh, and I, you know, when I bring Steve on next week, I'll send you a reminder if you want to take a listen, or if you'd like to call in and chat, or whatever you want to do, that's fine too. It'll be next week around this same time. And, yeah, um, I would actually love to hear a reminder from you. Yeah, yeah, and that's not a problem. Austin, did you have any final questions for, for Martin before we go ahead and uh, take it to a close? Uh, Yeah, um, was it? You were talking about breakout stars. I was thinking, I mean, when I see, you know, the word well, breakout star, I see, I see people like, you know, Antonio Cesaro, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. You know, those people are the, you know, the people I see as what's going to be holding WWE up in the future. The Definitely. I, I'm really excited to see Seth Rollins in action. Uh, on a WWE stage, I've seen him on his FCW stuff. Seth Rollins is going to be the guy. I think that's um, they just need an in for him. I think the Shield is it, but I think he needs to break away from the Shield and do his own thing. Uh, it's just a matter of time. So, and that strive and, and push, like we were talking about earlier, he just exactly. got stick in that count. Say, hey, this is what I want to do: fight for that TV time for himself. Exactly. exactly. Well, you know hey guys, I appreciate the interview, you guys. I hope you all hit me up on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at that Martin. Not a problem. Uh, send me a text or not. All right. Hey, thanks, guys. Hope you guys have a good rest of the night. I'm going to enjoy this steak here, all right? <laughs> have fun, man. Thanks good to talk now. to you.